Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you a crazy cool experiment that you can probably do at home that shows you how to bend light. But before I do that experiment, I want to first convince you that light moves in a straight line. Okay, proof number one that light usually moves in a straight line. You can't see me right now. So if light didn't move in a straight line, you'd be able to see me right now because the light would just come from my face, go around this block here and go to the camera. But you don't see me right now. And the reason is because this is in the straight path between me and the camera. But as soon as I move it out of the way, then you can see me because the light can go straight from my face to the camera. But you may say, if light only moves in a straight line, how come someone that's in front of me can see my face and someone to the side of me can see my face? If it only goes in a straight line, wouldn't it just hit the person in front of me? Well, no, because even though light always moves in a straight line, it doesn't say which direction that straight line is facing. So the straight line could be this way or that way. It turns out that the light hitting my face has light going all different directions. So there's a bunch of light pointing this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, and this way. And so people all around me can see my face. And again, you may say, if light moves in a straight line, how come a laser looks like this, but a flashlight looks like this? See how the laser just goes in one straight direction, but a flashlight curves like this. Does this mean that flashlight light curves and doesn't go in a straight line, but laser light goes in a straight line? Well, no, it doesn't mean that at all. Both of these lights are going in a straight line. It just means that a flashlight has light that's going this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, and this direction. Whereas a laser light only has light that's going this direction. So you can see that all of these rays of light are moving in a straight line, but they're just pointing different directions. So all light moves in a straight line, but it doesn't always point the same direction. So what I wanna show you today is not just light that's pointing in a different direction, but light that goes like this. So now that you believe me that light does go in a straight line always, the question is why does it go in a straight line? Why is light always moving straight? Why doesn't it ever look like this? Well, there's a lot of answers to this question and it can get really complicated depending on how you look at it. But today I wanna to give the easiest right answer. Remember I showed you in a previous video that light has momentum. And I showed you this by reflecting light hanging off a reflector in a vacuum and I showed you that you could turn the reflector just by shining light on it. Now there's a specific law in physics called conservation of momentum. And it means that momentum is always conserved. So if you have momentum in one direction, it has to continue in that direction. So just like this ball has momentum, it means that once I start rolling this ball in a specific direction, it's going to keep going that direction. And the only way it can change directions is if I add momentum to the system. So as a result of that, light always moves in a straight line for the same reason that any object that we throw moves in a straight line from when we throw it. Now the conservation of momentum explanation for light moving in a straight line is the easiest one that's also correct, but there's also a bunch of different explanations you could use. A lot of them having to do with quantum mechanics. The quantum mechanical explanation has to do with superposition, mainly that the wave function of all of the photons being emitted cancel each other out in every direction except the forward direction straight ahead of it. So at this point we know why light moves in a straight line and we know that it does always move in a straight line. So the speed of light in a vacuum is a constant that never changes and it's the fastest that light can go. But when you put light in different materials, then you start to slow down that light a little bit. So let's say I put it in this material that's kind of dense. So these are atoms that are absorbing and then re-emitting the light. So it's a transparent material, the light goes straight through it. But what happens is the light hits an atom, gets absorbed and then re-emitted, and so it kind of takes some time to get through. So the time in between atoms, it's actually moving at the speed of light in a vacuum. But this time of absorbing and then re-emitting by these atoms 
adds to the overall time. So it appears as though light is moving slower in a material that has more atoms. And so if you had a material that was really dense, then it would appear that light moves really slow through it. Now this ability to effectively slow down light in a material is called the material's refractive index. So this has a high refractive index, this has a medium one, this has a low one. Now the effect of light moving slower as it goes through a denser medium is actually really interesting because what it causes it to do is that as soon as the light enters that new medium, it causes the light to bend. So for example, using my acrylic vacuum chamber lid and this laser here, you can see how the path of light bends as soon as it enters the acrylic here. If the acrylic's straight on, it goes straight, but once I change the angle, it gets, a, it gets really dramatic. So you can see how dramatic the bend is here as it comes in at this angle and hits the acrylic. Now the light is going this direction. So it changed the direction of light instead of going this way, it changed it to go this way. Now the reason that light curves when it hits a material is because light always takes the path of least time between two points. For example, it would take light actually longer time if it went in a straight line when it entered a denser material because it can move faster in this material than this material. So it will travel longer in the material that can, it can move in faster and it will travel the shortest distance in the material that it moves slower in to get to Q the fastest. And because the refractive index is actually dependent on the wavelength of light, that means that you can actually spread out and separate the different colors of light just by passing it through two different materials. So in this case, we're going from air into glass. So I have a white light source here, and it hits this and spreads out the light. And then you can see on the wall here, all the different colors that are actually in that white light. So this is because the red light moves at a slightly different speed in the glass than the violet here, and so that means that they're bent a little bit different, and because they're bent a little bit different, they come off at different angles, so they can get split up like this. So now at this point, now we know that light always moves in a straight line, but if it hits a different material with a different density, then it changes directions. But at that point, once it's in that new material, it still moves in a straight line. So no matter how hard we try with those other materials, light still ends up going straight in whatever material it's in. But now I wanna show you a special material that within that material, light doesn't even go in a straight line. So even though it's staying within the same material, you'll see the light actually form kind of an arch. It'll curve within the material itself. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so I've filled my vacuum chamber up with a very specific material. And what this material is going to do is towards the bottom, when I move my beam of uh, laser down towards the bottom, it's going to bend it so that it points at the bottom instead of just going straight. Okay, here we go, shining my laser through it. Look what happens as it gets near the bottom. Look how it looks like it's attracted to the bottom. So it curves. So cool. For example, if I drop this ball in here. So you can see how the light can come above the ball, but then hit below it. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So what I've created here is called a gradient index material. And what that means is that the material that's in here is not one consistent density, but it's higher density at the bottom and lower density at the top. And so what that means is that as light gets towards the bottom, it's going to bend more. So what's interesting about this is watch what it looks like as we move low. 
it looks like the bottom of the chamber is bowing up. So you can see the ball just sitting there like normal from above. And then I'm gonna come down and see what it looks like as I move, as I move lower here. Let's see when we can stop seeing it now. So we can see it still, we can see it, we can see it. Now I'm below the box, but I can still see the ball. Okay, so there's the ball. Now as I move down, I'm gonna get below the edge of the box, but I can still see the ball. <laughs> so I'm a few inches below it, and I can still see the ball right there. <laughs> it's pretty cool. In fact, a little bit le better than laser light, you can follow the path of the bottom corner of the box and look how bent it looks. So watch as I get down low, watch the background here, watch how it lenses everything. In fact, it makes it look like there's a slope here. So you can see the edge going up there, but there's actually not a slope there. It's actually just flat. You can see it's just flat like that. So you can actually create something like this yourself just by using water and sugar. So that's all I did here is fill this up with water and then put a layer of sugar on the bottom. And I let the layer of sugar sit there for about 24 or 48 hours. So the sugar dissolved, but it didn't dissolve evenly throughout the whole container. It just stayed on the bottom because the sugar water is more dense than regular water. So all the sugar that dissolved in the water stayed at the bottom. Basically what that does is create a density gradient where it's densest at the bottom and least dense at the top. So if you think that you haven't seen this phenomenon caused by this gradient index, you're probably wrong because this is the same phenomenon that causes mirages on roads. So a mirage happens on a hot road because the light from the sky is coming down at an angle, but the air right above the road is a little bit hotter than the air in the sky. And so that causes that air to be a little bit less dense. And so it bends it the opposite way than what we saw in my experiment here. It bends it up more. So basically the light comes down and it hits that less dense material and it gets bent up a little. And then it can shine kind of straight into your eyes as you're driving. So basically you looking at it, it looks like the sky is actually in the road because you're seeing light that you assume is straight, but it's actually being bent from the sky and hitting you in the eye. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video is out. And if you haven't checked it out yet, head over to theactionlab.com to check out the Action Lab subscription box. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.